In this video, what I'd like to do is, is show you how I'm using the uh, X-Tools F1 Ultra Laser uh, to cut thin titanium. And so for this illustration, what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, a pair of earrings that I've simply drawn uh, in Procreate and converted to a vector and then used the fiber laser to cut out. Now most of the time, I, I love using my jeweler's saw, and for many metals, like most silver, gold, copper, it's, it's frankly a little quicker and easier for me to use my saw. But with titanium, uh, I can cut it with my, my saw, but it is a little harder to do, and it uh, eats the saw blades. So it turns out that the laser uh, is, is capable of cutting thin gauge titanium, and it does quite a nice job. In addition to that, one of, the, one of the features of reactive metals, beyond the fact that they're very dense and very lightweight for their, for their, uh, for their density, is that they can be colored in an interesting way using thin film oxidation. And since with that process you use heat to apply uh, an oxide layer uh, that, that then refracts light and, and gives you a coloration, we can also use the laser to color it. So with that, I hope you enjoy this brief demonstration. Okay, here we are in Xtools Creative Space and I've placed a vector image of a simple earring design that I drew just this afternoon. Um, you can purchase vectors and, or draw your own. Just be certain that you don't uh, distribute a purchased vector uh, as, as the digital format unless you have permission. Um, in any event, what I've done, notice, is I've made it in two layers so that I have the interior cuts in a red layer. And remember, you do that by selecting uh, here and then you can move it to another layer if you need. And I've put the outside on a, on a black layer. And what this lets me do is position them so that I can drag the red layer up and that makes sure that this layer will cut before the black. Okay. So, I've just positioned it on there. You could do 2, 12, as many as you want, but I like to do one at a time uh, to keep myself sane. Um, there are many different settings over here that you can use um, for cut, and, and many will work. Uh, this is just one combination of these three variables that I know will work with 26 gauge titanium. Okay, but you may have to play around just a little bit. So I've already framed this, and let's go to process it so that we can see how long it's going to take. At least how long the, uh, the program claims it's going to take. Okay, it says it'll take about 8 minutes, and, and it may take more like 12. I've, I've found that um, or, or even more. I found that the, while the time estimates for embossing and engraving have been pretty accurate for me, these cuts where you use thousands of passes, I think that screws with the, uh, with the time estimate a little bit. So you should count on more time than what it's going to tell you. Okay, so let's just send it to the laser and then we'll start cutting. Okay, there we go. If you're going to be cutting thin metal, um, a, a device like this is handy because it allows you to hold the flat sheet very rigid uh, so that it, the heat doesn't deform it and uh, cause it to buckle. Now, I've seen many people do some clever things with uh, homemade things and having well, a lot of different jigs. But if you're gonna do a substantial amount uh, of cutting, I, I strongly advise getting one of these vices.
as predicted, that uh, actually took 16 minutes, almost 17. So that was about, not quite double, but almost double the estimated time. Alrighty. So if we did it correctly, then what we should be able to do is simply pop this out. Uh, it, it might hold a little bit. Be careful because you don't want to deform it. But hopefully, yes, there it goes. We're able to pop it out of there. And there we go. We can, we can pull it out. Okay, so that worked really reasonably well. Um, yeah, I, I suspect that this cutting process would be improved some if and when uh, they can get a wobble function incorporated into the software for cutting. That would simply increase the kerf size and make it a little easier uh, to, to cut through thin metal like this. But all in all, not too shabby. Okay, with a little bit of luck, we can punch these out. Hopefully, they may take just a little bit of a, of a push, sometimes easier than others. This is another place I think the wobble would help a great deal. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna do uh, is to sand or lightly polish uh, your your titanium because no matter how fast you go it's going to heat up and it's going to discolor and it will help your predictability of, uh, of what you're going to color it with if you can get the surface at least uh, back to a, a, a bare metal i'm using a, a buffing wheel with a, like a scotch brite pad you can use anything really uh, you know the sandpaper good sandpaper is really fine uh, steel wool, something like that. This is just what I do. It's, it's just because it's really easy. Yeah. I'm back in creative space. And uh, the reason I'm here for you is because although I usually color my reactive metals, titanium and niobium, uh, using electrical current and an anodization process that's a little beyond the scope of this video but because you have a dual laser you've got a lot of different options available to you I'm just going to show you the the real quick and dirty one it's very simple is to use now the blue laser and I'm going to put a, a rectangle that I'm going to engrave right over the top of that uh, earring that I that I've cut out and the settings I'll use here, you can you can play with these and, and try to try to get slightly different colors. I have not dialed in my coloring yet, uh, but this works pretty well. I'll use the blue laser at 100% power, 500 millimeters per second, and 300 lines per centimeter for resolution. And that should take just a, a minute or so. So let's see what it does. Yeah, about a minute and 10 seconds. So let's send it to the laser and see what we get. And there we have it. So if you raise your shield like I did for these filming purposes, be sure you're wearing protective eye gear so that you don't have a problem. I just put anything under it. I like a piece of aluminum under this so that I don't uh, mess up my face. And that tends to work really very well. Look at that. Isn't that pretty?